Welcome to my latest video. This one is going to be computer related. It's going to be doing the preventive maintenance that I do anywhere between six months and a year on my computers that I'm using every day, like my main workstation. I hope you get something out of it. Enjoy. I'm not really sure if I ever showed my computer, my main workstation that I use every day and I also edit my videos on in its actual little cubby underneath my desk. This was actually came with the desk. I'm sure you've seen the screens on some of my videos and some of the other components in the background. And I believe I showed my computer out of its little hole, but I don't think I ever showed it actually inside of its location. If you look very carefully here, you will actually see some of my LED lighting that uh, comes out of the side window. And I'll show that a little bit more after I get it out and make it a little more visible. But as you can see, it's time. The incoming air filter here is quite dirty. You can actually see the pattern of the holes that appears behind the filter as a result of all the dust that's accumulated. Also, I have to locate a 16 gigabit SD card. It fell into the opening here when the things are dark and I put it into the XD slot of my IO panel that I've installed in this computer and it fell down in there somewhere. The first thing I'll need to do is disconnect all of the cables from the back of the PC. I'll show you the stand that I actually have my computer on once I pulled it out of its little cubby down at the bottom, as you can see down at the bottom here made of wood mostly. So with that, let me shut the computer off first, then come back and remove all of the uh, cables. So I'll start at the top. I'll disconnect my ground strap, disconnect the USB connectors that I have here, disconnect the network cable, disconnect HDMI that I have as an auxiliary when I'm doing video capture, and disconnect my two DisplayPort cables. And then of course disconnect the power cable. I should have turned this switch off first. Mainly for when I turn it back on. I want to make sure it doesn't automatically come up until I turn that switch on. Wow, from down here you can really see all the dust. There's the shelf that it's on. I gotta get all of these DVD and Blu-ray disc the blanks here. A little bit of dust, but that's sort of expected here. What I have to do to take this thing out is pull out the little metal sleeves that go up underneath the shelves. Those little plastic coated shelves that are right there that hold the shelf up. So I have to lift up the front of this just enough to get these little standoffs out on both sides and then I can lower the whole thing down and keep track of my computer obviously until I can bring it forward out of its little cubby. Make sure I don't lose these little pieces here put them here on the shelf for now so as you can see i have a top filter as well that's blowing in that's completely well not completely but pretty full of dust this one here blows out so there's no filter on that one and then of course you've already seen the front one but i'll turn it around and let you take a look at it this way some more and you'll see that it's quite dusty so i'll now take this off of its stand and then here's the stand that I created for this. And I'll show you in more detail once I cleaned it out. Got everything set up here. Peter is out on my welding table. I don't plan on welding it, but the welding table, nice sturdy position for doing a lot of things. I'm actually glad to see that the filters are quite dusty, which means that the positive airflow system that I've created inside the case is actually working fairly well. First thing I'm going to do is vacuum off all of those filters. And I won't be talking while I do this part, I'll just go ahead and vacuum it. So this particular filter is actually a magnetic filter that I put on there when I modified the case. You'll also see here, as I'll show more inside, the actual holes that I drilled when I created intakes for the two fans that were much better than the side intakes that this thing currently has.
Now I need to take off the side covers so I can look what's inside. First I'll take off the bottom side cover with my engineering seal on it. I say, as I've showed in previous videos, I don't know if you've seen this, but I actually have a diagram that I created showing all of the fans, the layout and the directions with these little arrows, of which way do the fans either blow in or blow out. I don't know if I've shown you my cable management. Could be better, but I think it does the job. I made sure I stayed away from any critical areas that I wanted to be able to get to easily, including the back of the CPU if I had to do something about the cooler. I am thinking about changing that cooler to an all black one, but that's a, a future mod that I will do. So the inside of my case, which I can actually show probably inside as well when I'm getting ready to put it back together, there is very little dust in here, which goes to show that the positive pressure that I built up by having more fans blowing in rather than blowing out has really been beneficial to reducing this the dust that would accumulate inside the case. Well, I forgot, forgot to clean a bottom fan here. Look how dusty that one is. So in every place where I have a fan blowing in, I put the ultra-fine filter to keep the dust out as much as possible. Ideally, in its cubby, I could reach in with the vacuum cleaner and vacuum this stuff out. But I figured I would get it out here to show everybody how it looks. Now I'm going to blow the actual case completely clear with air. I've already got the air set up here for my air compressor and I'm going to blow it all out just to see if I get anything residual. Not too powerful. I am getting this fan to spin, which I talked about in a previous video. That does not hurt anything. And I still plan on making a video proving that. Oh, it's not spinning too well, anything. I'm going to have to check the spinning of that fan to make sure it's okay. And I'm blowing them all until I see some sort of spin. Trying to get out all the residual dust that I have up inside of these filters here. There we go. Compressor kicked on there for a second, so I turned it off again. I still have to find that SD card in here. I'm not exactly sure where it's at. I don't see it having fallen out in my manip manipulating of this. So I may actually have to pull out my optical drive to actually find it. That I.O. panel, the five and a quarter inch I.O. panel that I have is uh, right on top of that. So let me uh, reconvene inside. Okay, I got it back inside now. I need to find that memory SD card. It was in the top of this area here. That's where the I.O. panel is. Let me see if I can find that in here. Well, I see something. See the label. Hold on a second. Let's see if I can get to that. One second here. Ah, got it. There's the SD disk, a 16 gigabyte camera one that I have. So now at this point, I just need to make sure everything's secure the way I originally had installed it. Let me check to make sure everything's tight. The fan is still tight on here. Looks like the clips are down in the right position. Tight. I'm going to go ahead and tighten these to make sure that they are not too much, just make sure there aren't any loose ones. The two for the video card are actually a little bit loose. The connectors are in. Make sure I don't have anything sticking out in here. Fan looks good. 
Now I'm going to turn it on and check all this out too. Notice here that I have a sticker and I recommend that as you do your builds. Go ahead and make a sticker for when you actually build it. So you can always go back and take a look at that. So let me go ahead and put power on this thing. Fly on. Let me hit the power switch from here. Make sure all the fans are turning good. As you can see, I just have a touch of RGB in here. That one in the back here came with the motherboard. I just didn't turn it off. And I put a little small section of a RGB strip on the top and it's connected to the motherboard RGB connector down there. Let me make sure all the fans are working. That one looks good. That one looks good. Both front ones look good. This back one is fine. This is a wooden base, mostly wood, that I built for this. Give it a little bit of a rise, three quarters of an inch rise, plus another inch with these rubber feet so I can get it off the shelf that I have inside that cubby and get more airflow. A one by eight panel that I had, a piece of regular lumber, and I just took it and marked it and then used a jigsaw to cut it out. I made little feet areas for it, dug those out right in here. Quite a bit of space here. Um, more than an inch and a half of air that can be fed in there. So with that, let me put the covers back on. I actually cut this out, then etched it. It's actually etched on the inside. I printed out a copy of my PE stamp, and I etched it with a Dremel. Just a little decoration. I know it doesn't make any sense being in the cubby that I put it, but a little bit of light does show through. At times when I have it out, like right now, it's a showpiece. And it celebrates my PE license. I'm going to go ahead and put it back in its little hidden cubby. Okay, everything's installed. It's back in its cubby. And I'm ready to fire it up. Let's power it on. I see a power light. So we're looking better. Looks good. I even got the screen plugs in the right order. Let me log in. Okay, let me go see if there's a new BIOS for this motherboard. It's about time. I haven't checked in a while. Go over to the ASUS website. Asus.com. We go into support, consumer support, drivers and manuals, enter download center, motherboards, product series, Asus Prime, model number, Prime Z. 370A2. There we go. Drivers and tools. My OS is Windows 10 64 bit. And what do we have here? A new BIOS, just recent 515. So it's definitely a newer version. 801, I think that might be 601. Definitely older than that. We'll see it later. But let me go ahead and download that. It says here I have to also install the RST driver. So let me load down that one as well. Folder, Prime, save it there. Now I have to get the RST. There's a few new things here. There's a new VGA driver, but I'm not using the onboard VGA. The Rapid Storage Technology. So I got to download the RST. That's what this is, Rapid Storage Technology Driver. So I've got to download that as well. I'll load the new BIOS first and then update the RST driver afterward. Let me do an uncompress of this. Tracked all. It'll go right into here, that's fine. It'll create a new subdirectory as you see here that's not compressed. And there's the BIOS. So I've got to put that into a USB stick so I can easily load it. Got my stick in hand, let me plug it in and format it just to be safe. Right click on it, format, it'll quick format, good enough, and I'll start it. Give me a warning, it's formatting it. The format is now complete. I grab this one, right click, drag it over here, copy here. So I'm now copying it to the USB. 
the next thing I'll do is boot it up into the BIOS. Okay, here's the USB stick that I created. A gigabyte USB stick that has a new BIOS on it. I'm going to go ahead and plug it into this front panel USB. So I'm going to power on and I'm going to hit the delete key many, many times. until I can go hopefully directly into the BIOS. There we go, we have a BIOS up. Okay, so this is the ASUS BIOS and I'm gonna want to do a BIOS update. I have to come in here and click on advanced mode first. I have to pick, I believe it's tool, ASUS EZ Flash 3. It's the top entry there. I click via storage, which is the one highlighted right now click on next it should see my ASUS 801 so highlight that do I wish to flash it I'm gonna say yes flash it now I do have a UPS which is a good thing by the way to have especially when you're updating a BIOS you don't want this thing to lose power during a BIOS update sometimes it will corrupt things I'm clicking the yes firming me and now it's processing the bottom status bar will tell us its progress Remember, after I do this, um, I believe I can just go in and do the update of the RST directly within Windows. We're successful. Now it's resetting. Okay, we've rebooted now, and I'm back in the BIOS. Now we're in version 8.01. Let me show you here. Version 0801. Now I should go back and make some more touch-ups on the BIOS. The only one I'm going to do for sure is going to make sure the fans are properly programmed. So if I go into this QFAN control and click on that, I'm going to leave it as standard, but I'm going to tell it to optimize all fans. These are the fans that are currently in my system. Click on optimize all. So it's going to try the fans in a certain sequence and determine the optimal ways of dealing with it. So you hear the fan cycling up right now. And it'll be changing speeds all throughout this configuration. Becoming dead silent now. 100. And it's showing the duty cycles for each of the fans. All my fans are PWM fans. And I can look at each fan, how they're going to cycle depending on the temperature that they sense. My preventive maintenance is now complete. Well, once again, thanks for watching my video. And I hope you learned something from it. If you did, do me a big favor and subscribe to my channel. It would really help in terms of allowing me to make new videos in the future. Just click on this little head here. There's no cost and you'll only be bothered and only slightly if you choose to get notifications. Thank you.